I don't drink soda. Action. Is it, is it action after you do, I guess, yeah, action, right? Action, yeah. Yep. Action, baby. Uh, fuck, that means we have to start right now, right? I mean, we got the lights, the camera. Okay, yeah, then, yeah. Like, Welcome to the Natural Habitat Podcast. My name is Mikey Booya. My name is Awesome Ty. Computer's here, Smart Plug is here, Free Candy's up north in Canada. Free Candy, say what's up, bud. Free Candy, can you hear me, pal? <laughs> He can, he can, he can hear. I feel like you know this. He can hear you. You know, we just, we just can't hear him. We can't. So he can hear us. We can't hear him, but the audience can hear him. Can they see him? Is there a camera on him? There is a camera on him, but it's not edited into the final cut. But there is a camera on him. I got you. Well, you know. Uh, so thanks for being here with us, and um. We'd also like to welcome uh, the fellas, the ladies, you know, the habit rats. Thank you for joining us. Hi. We appreciate it. And we appreciate it more than usual right now because I personally am shook. I don't know about you, Ty. You kind of seem like it wasn't a very big deal. But um, we recently have had quite a few tornadoes in our area. Are you familiar with a tornado? Yeah, I'm familiar with a tornado now. Typically, you know, we live in California. Mm -hmm. Typically, very mild weather, not extreme weather, too much, aside from maybe some heat. But um, the past year, I would say, about a year, we've been getting some crazy storms that that are beginning to be more similar to the the ones you see in, like, Florida, Mm -hmm. wherever these places that typically have this bullshit weather. And you hear about El Nino and all these crazy, like, uh, floods and shit. But it's always kind of mild. We're unprepared for it, you know what I mean? Like, we actually had a hurricane advisory in our area, Mm -hmm. which I've never never seen a hurricane or heard of a hurricane, let alone. No. So, I mean, it's... And all these people... uh, online were marking themselves safe from the storm in california and this was before the tornado before it got crazy power was out of your house for 14 hours something, something like that yeah my, the power was out all over paso for for quite a while uh mm-hmm. roads were flooded to the point where you would have to turn around and go back you couldn't cross these roads yeah you know, did anyone uh, resort to violence Oh, I'm sure. I'm, I, you know, I wasn't around to witness it, mm-hmm. but you can only imagine there were some some violent outbursts. So, yeah. I mean, it's really unfortunate. We're not prepared for it here in California, and frankly, I don't want to have to get prepared. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to <laughs> yeah. have to add another thing that I worry about. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be even to where people that are in Tornado Alley or uh, or Dixie Alley, they call it. Yeah. Uh, they are ready for tornadoes. We're ready for earthquakes. Yeah, it's just bullshit. You know, like if if we don't get perfect weather, like what are we even doing here in California? Like if, if our weather is the same as like fucking some bullshit state where you can live for $35 a month, like what yeah. what are we doing here? We're like supposed our- to have some nice, beautiful, quaint thunderstorms where you get some hot cocoa, you hang out by the fire. It's like a whole vibe. You yeah. Know? And I remember uh, <clears throat> when... Uh, I drove across the United States of America, right, you know, to Illinois. And went I to Illinois. <clears throat> drove through all these different states, and I remember we were getting uh, close to, we were in like Wyoming, Nebraska, on then to the fork to Colorado. Just all the, the flyover states that, that yeah. basically typically have nothing going for them. Everything's flat as a pancake, right, and it's Tornado Alley. It's a perfect spot for these tornadoes to pick up and i remember we were driving i was driving everybody else was asleep it's like late at night and i see in front of us this like storm brewing on the horizon it's just tall all the way up and the lightning that's striking in it is like making the clouds glow orange very ominous. Very ominous. Terrifying. Nothing like anything that I've ever seen before. And I was driving like right into it. And luckily it moved this way. The highway shifted this way and I dodged it. <clears throat> but it was scary and something that I am not prepared for having grown up in California. Yeah, exactly. So we've we've taken the liberty to get you guys prepared. Um, mm-hmm. Assuming Sorry. chair trouble here. Oh, are you dro- you're dropping? I'm dropping again. You got to spin the bottom. <laughs> I 
Okay. Yeah, it'll work. We're going to get you guys ready, even if you don't live in California. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe one day you plan on moving to California, or you don't plan on it, and it happens spontaneously. You'll be ready. Or what are other places that don't have cal or tornadoes? Oh. I found out that tornadoes primarily happen in the U.S. Really? It's not like an uh, international thing so much? Well, they happen uh, all around the world. Here, you got to spin the legs. you got to twist the legs around. Give that a try. All right. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> Tornadoes aren't really a thing that happen. Uh, they happen all around the world and can happen in uh, supercells and non-supercell storms. But they primarily happen in the U.S. That's wild. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really the only tornado fact I have. Yeah, I have zero head. tornado facts. <laughs> What about like um, tsunamis? What about what, what's that? What's a tsunami? Tsunami is an earthquake that happens in the middle of the ocean, and it creates a tidal wave, which compounds, grows, and then eventually takes out you know a coastal city. Ah, uh, got you. And what about a monsoon? Monsoon is like a rain, but like a big rain, big flood rain. And what about? And it's a jungle. Everything's jungleless. What about a hurricane? Hurricane is a tornado on the ocean. Okay. All right. All right. What else you got? That's all of them, right? That's all of the a major typhoon. national disasters. Oh, yeah. What's a typhoon? It's a tiny hurricane. It's a tiny So, So we're more likely to get a typhoon than a, a full-blown hurricane where they name it? Yeah. Because we when, one thing that we get in California a lot is dust devils, right? And I've Dust seen storms? Some, no, like uh, they're tiny dust tornadoes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen some big ones that go up hella high, but it doesn't start from the ground and come down and touch down. It starts, or I mean start from the sky and come down and touch down to the ground. It goes from the ground up. So that's like a whole different type of thing. But, <clears throat> I mean, obviously we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We don't know anything about tornadoes. No, so we... What better place to, to look than we've got some wiki how? Mm -hmm. Wiki how, how to survive a tornado. How to survive a tornado. It's going to be cut and dry. It's going to teach us some steps how to do this. Wiki how rarely lets us down, mm -hmm. almost never. So, so uh, wiki how says it's often said that tornadoes are nature's most violent storms. And for good reason, not only do tornadoes care. And you're still dipping over there? Yeah, just a little bit. I'm okay. fine. Uh, winds up to 300 miles per hour. So tornadoes are on an EF scale, right? What, what is an EF scale? So it goes from zero, which is winds from like 65 to 95 miles per hour. So and, is that is that typically like, is that windy? I have no frame of reference as to like how, how fast the wind is going when it's blowing. So an F5 is... Uh, 300 mile per hour plus so and that's like a big big tornado that's right a big, that's a big twister big guy that's the now one what's the where... difference between a twister and a, a old-fashioned tornado so a twister is a type of tornado that bill pullman is it like a super tornado like a stronger one was it bill paxton paxton yeah okay so bill paxton R. would chase these twisters which are like um they're like renegade tornadoes, like tornadoes that don't go with the flow. They don't. They they, they, they don't follow. March the pack. to the beat of their own drummer. Yeah, these, these it twisters. actually talked about it in this one about um how they can do oh anti cyclonic tornadoes That's, that spin in the opposite direction. That's a twister. Oh shit! So those are the ones that you have to you get Dorothy right the machine. And it has like a bunch of little balls in it. You put it in the back of your truck. You drive the truck into the tornado. But before you do that, somebody else pulls up in another truck. And then you run up to the car. And they roll their window down. And you run up and the wind's crazy. And like your hair's wet and stuff. And you go, we got to get Dorothy. We got to get Dorothy strapped up in the truck. Let's go. You get in the trucks. You head out. And you... 
What were they doing in Twister? Just studying a tornado? Is that pretty much it? I think there was like a supernatural element to it, perhaps, though, to where like no. maybe like a witch had conjured up this <laughs> no. tornado and they were having to look for like a some sort of antidote. To... What, what was that movie with John Travolta phenomenon? Do you remember that? Um, I remember it existing. And he had like a magical, some sort of magical thing. Um, was that the one where he had like pale white skin? He was like super, super white. Powder? Powder, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, tornadoes, the wind, it'd be busting, right? It's going crazy. It's going wild. It's not, it's act, acting a fool, you would even say. So, the first thing that you would want to do is take your socks and shoes off. Yeah, yeah. You're going to want to be barefoot for this, mm-hmm. for sure. Shoes are, I mean, you might think shoes would be protective, but in this case, they're just going to hold you back. You want to be able to grip the ground with your toes. Yeah, you're going to have to, like, move some things with your toes more than likely, yeah. right? Um, then you're, I hope that you live in some sort of evil dead style, uh, yeah. With like a big wooden hatch. Yeah. You're going to need a big wooden hatch door. So if you don't have one of those suggest, you know, hiring a contractor, even doing it yourself, get Mm -hmm. one installed and, um, yeah. Dig a hole, get an underground shelter going. Yeah. Ideally you want like a cellar or something under the ground level, right? Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing is that in tornado alley in Dixie alley. There, I think Dixie Alley is a thing, right? That's something that I read in one of these articles. In Dixie Alley, uh, fucking, oh yeah, Dixie Alley. There it is. Tornado Alley and Dixie Alley. So these people have underground shelters. They have evil dead cabins with a hatch in the ground. It's a normal thing that people have, a shelter. Yeah, sure. Because tornadoes happen. So now tornadoes happen here. We need to all build shelters. We need to all come together, dig holes in the ground, put hatches in, and that step one is getting a hatch. Yo, yeah, you're gonna need that hatch. If you live in like apartment or something, you know, like a multi story home, um, I don't know, figure it out. Maybe you have to, you know, make the hatch go down to the people that live under you. <laughs> and you, I mean, yeah. If that that's might what count. You, if that's what you've got to do, you're trying to survive here, so you can't survive really... a tornado. Yeah, uh, you want to be on the lowest floor, and you want to be underneath. So this, according to rule two, it's earthquake rules. You know, you go underneath the desk, you hold your head, you crouch down, and. I guess earthquake. You do you want to be on the basement in an earthquake? I think so. I think the lowest possible. Place yeah, in case go. the building falls. So earthquake rules. Uh, also, probably any rule about earthquake will work with a tornado. Uh, next says no buildings. Yeah, don't live in a. Um, is that a skyscraper? Yeah, don't live in a skyscraper. We saw what happened on nine eleven. Um, you know, a, a twister could just as easily take those towers down. So if you live in like a like a skyscraper in New York City, especially, just be advised. You know, like these, you never know when these terrorist twisters could come yeah. through and just. And twisters, they usually come like in spurts where it'll be one after the other. So yeah, you got one that takes down uh-huh. the first tower. Boom, another twister comes right along, takes yeah. out that second tower. Yeah, yeah. We got nine eleven all over again. Boom. And I remember uh, reading that the one, the two that we had here, one hit at like 3.40 p.m. and the other one hit at like 3.51 p.m. 11 minutes, the same as the Twin Towers. Yeah. Yep. The two planes. There's going to be a lot of parallels between 9-11 and the tornado, so keep, mm-hmm. a, keep an eye out for those. Uh, so you don't want to live in the Twin Towers. You don't want to live you in You also a, probably want to not live in a trailer now i would assume that you should just not want to live in a trailer for any reason um not just tornadoes but yeah definitely try to avoid living in like a mobile home or a trailer brick house rv cinder block yeah brick foundations ideal Mm -hmm. um it's it's kind of like a like a three little pig situation here where you know the the tornado is basically the equivalent of of the big bad wolf coming to huff and puff and blow their house down the brick house was the one that finally the big bad wolf couldn't blow down. Mm-hmm. So just keep keep in mind. And uh, you know, here in California, we're gonna have these F zeros. We're gonna have these F ones. I don't think we're gonna have F fives yet. Yeah, 
For, I got I hope not. Fuck. Can you imagine that F5 tornado just rolling through? Fuck no. Let me... Oh, man. Am I, am I becoming a distraction here? No. Uh, we got to... We got to... If anybody knows how to fix a pump a hydraulic cylinder on a yeah, chair, sound off. If you're off. a chair guy, um, like a computer <laughs> chair guy, sound yeah. off in the comments below. Let us know what's going on. They're like teacher I ju- chairs. I'm just like slowly sinking down. Uh-huh. Maybe and something can be tightened and it could, you know, be good. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll just yell at it. There. Yeah, we could yell. Jerry, you should probably watch a YouTube this video right now. absolutely Jerry work. About how to fix this and then fix it. Guy's fucking useless. Um, so... Yeah, you don't want to live in the Twin Towers. You don't want to look at the Twin Towers. Um, remain in in your shelter until the dangerous tornadoes have passed. Now, I don't know exactly how you would know that the tornado's gone because you might think it's gone, but the tornadoes the are yeah, they're unpredictable. They could easily double back. They could uh-huh. spin the block, as you know, like rappers would say, and they double back to destroy and wreak carnage again. So, no, but that's the whole thing. You have the eye of the storm. It happened in Twister, where the tornado goes over you, and it's so big, this F five, that there's an area in between it where there's no wind. And you're just like, oh, okay, I'm safe. And it's almost, yeah. You pop you back out, out under your from under your desk, and all of a sudden, boom, the Twister's mm-hmm. got you. So Yeah, you're in an F8 um, with a fucking giant eye of the now tornado. Now, this says to be monitoring, like, radio or local TV, mm-hmm. but you're not always going to be in a situation where you have access to a radio or TV or even your phone. So um, in that case, just kind of got to trust your gut and... Um, even if the tornadoes pass, you should still use common sense. Yeah, I would say however long you think is enough, double it. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Or and maybe just, good. just wait until someone comes <clears throat> and finds you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually not bad either. Just wait until the National Guard comes and knocks on the door. Or I something. mean, pretty, at some point, someone's going to come along. Hopefully, you have some loved ones or people in mm-hmm. your life that would that would miss you if you were noticeably gone. So. And when they do come and you do leave, you want to exit your shelter carefully. There's going to be a lot of... Uh, yeah, the you know, tornado's going to fuck your whole house up, I imagine, everywhere. right? Like, now, does the tornado get inside the house and spin around everything that's not yeah. mounted down? Is yeah, it'll reach it works? in through the windows and stuff. Yeah, so you know, your whole house, all your china, and basically mm-hmm. anything valuable is going to be destroyed. Your more Chinese than chicken? What? You said china? Your your fine china, like your and like, I said Chinese chicken, Chinese chicken, like the bare naked lady yeah, song. Yeah, have a drumstick and you bring. Some- you got it. Then you need to survive because after these tornadoes happen, you're going to be living in almost a post apocalyptic landscape. Absolutely, absolutely. It's going to be every man for themselves out there. So We're be not sure to, ready. Be sure to arm yourself. Um, it's best to have some some guns and plenty of am- ammunition. Yeah. If you don't happen to have that, um, consider you know like send her in like a like a video game and craft something. Mm-hmm. First thing you do when you get outside is to be like fashion, like a nail bat or, or some sort of makeshift weaponry. Um, because, you know, people are going to be, it's going to be every man for themselves out there. There's going to be very little food, I would assume for some yeah. reason. So people are going to be hungry <coughs> and just doing what they have to yeah. do to, people to are keep them be hungry. They're going to be trying to take your supplies. Gold is going to be uh, currency. I mean, it's possible that there's just like a, a tremendous bloodlust in general where people are killing for, for the thrill at that mm-hmm. point. So. It becomes like a purge type yeah. thing yep. with like a water world on land type situation. Yeah, like a Mad Max type deal. Yeah. But, Everything's like, you know, like plush and wet and green. It's not, uh, you know, it's beautiful California countryside. It's not a desert or a water world. Like a barren wasteland. Yeah. Then uh, you're going to want to drive if you have your car. This kind of seems like a bad idea in an apocalypse. Yeah, it says turn your high beams on and move immediately to some sort of structure preferably with a basement no yeah, okay again. so yeah you want to move as fast as you can to get to some sort of new home base some structure that hopefully you have set up with weapons and stuff yeah yeah this kind of want the car to haul your weapons 
I mean, this kind of seems a little bit late in the order. This should maybe be like one of the first things you do unless you happen to already be in your final destination for storm shelter. Mm -hmm. Then this has to just cry into your steering wheel for a while. Yeah, you're going to, I mean. You realize life's never going to be the same. Yeah, yeah. You know, like regardless of the weather, it's never a bad idea to have a good long cry in your car. (laughs) Yeah, it's good for you. It is healthy. It happens to the best of us and it's, you know, let that emotion out. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, and you'll feel better afterwards you really will uh then you compose yourself and uh this looks like they're tunneling yeah yeah they're tunneling down to the the center of the earth apparently um almost like a mole man situation now this is again you know this, this is, is smart this is showing us the a, a post-apocalyptic essentially uh, um you know vision of earth so the the water and the air are going to be they're tainted mm-hmm. so to get access to clean water and you know like not breathe in these toxins you're gonna have to dig and create an underground society yeah you have to dig till you find a natural well and then you need to dig sideways so that way you could create this platform with the water on the side you live here and i mean with this apocalyptic world going on you're gonna want nothing to do with that yeah and a, a plus is if you can't make it all the way you know to to the center of the earth you can just use it as a grave when you when you lie down and give up yeah you already got a nice this says grave. to lay face down cover the back of your head because yeah you're gonna you'd rather die of of asphyxiation than like a rock falling on your crushing your skull that's gonna be painful mm-hmm. uh you also don't want to dig near any overpasses or bridges for some reason uh now this one i'm, I'm taking it as this is like um you're trying to out twister the twister yeah i'm move. reading this is like it's encouraging you to like kind of dodge go it. up to the twister yeah and like this is maybe like fighting the storm that's a thing right like storm fighters yeah i think so no storm cha- bug chasers and <laughs> storm chasers those are things but i don't know about storm fighters there's no storm fight well there should be there yeah should there be, should uh, be there's a lot of cowards in this country so i mean this says to uh, literally juke the tornado. Yeah, it's saying move perpendicular to the tornado's direction if you're caught in open water. Oh, yeah, this is assuming that you're out in the ocean. Um, yeah, because if you're out in the ocean, you really have no no way to cover, so your best bet is to fight the tornado. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck else are you going to do? Yeah. You, either, you either square up with this fucking tornado or you drown, probably. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, a tornado over the ocean is a hurricane. So now this is preparing for a tornado. This is basically like a inception level thing where they're watching the podcast that we're doing right now, preparing oh, okay. them. Yeah. So to prepare, you watch a you podcast watch about preparing. Yeah. I see. And he's watching. We put that graphic up earlier. Yeah, of course. Uh, then- draw, draw a map, create an emergency plan for your house. Now, um, you can, no, this is that's not what this is. They're playing Clue, and this is no. I'm pretty sure they're drawing an emergency map of their. No, house. this is game night. Look, here's the kitchen. Here's the study. Here's the. Where are the game pieces? This is a basement. Where the are the game... where are the little game piece? Where, where's the the little envelope that that contains who did it? Right here. Where are the cards Look, under her hand? Where are, where's it's not Clue. That's a classic. It's not Clue. Concealing cards. Hand. Look at that. There's cards under that hand. All right. Well, you can play some clue. You're going to have time to kill, so. Mm-hmm. Craft an emergency plan of your house. Not That's unlike the, the Home Alone um, burglar instructions, you know what I mean, where he just had this map of his house for some reason that he could <laughs> carefully, yeah. intricately lay out his plans to, you know, torment these burglars. Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, you could probably hit up the city planner and get blueprints of your house. Yeah. So get that on deck. You could draw pictures on it. You could laminate it and then hit it with like dry erase. So that way you could wipe it off. So um, you're going to want to put together a little emergency kit with some essentials. You're going to want water, a radio, um, a gas can, a couple of cans of of food with no can opener, of course, Mm -hmm. Um, a flashlight, a few flashlights, batteries. And what is that? It's a lot of flashlights. What, what's the red and white? Candles? Yeah, candles. Candles. Um, and you want to put your water in like Windex bottles, it looks like. Yeah, and maybe a good book. 
maybe maybe some keepsakes mm -hmm. maybe maybe you want um some weed and this actually is good because this is a very very basic um essentials kit that they've prepared yeah you're gonna want to do a little better than that but in the apocalypse if people come and are trying to rob your goods they're gonna see you know some some glass cleaner instead of the water and they're gonna see some unmarked cans which could be dog food could be anything. yeah yeah it could be it could be dog food like you said or it yeah. could be deli like sliced peaches in, in heavy syrup mm -hmm. and they don't want to risk it they don't want to risk the biscuit because you steal something as small as a can of food in the apocalypse it starts a war yeah like we said it's gonna be every man for themselves out there and pretty much like a like a lord of the flies <laughs> type situation yeah uh then you're going to want to turn the gas in your house off. Now, I know that this is going to be tough because you're underground in this underground shelter that you've made. But I mean, this this wiki house put us in a lot of different places. At one point, we were out in the ocean. Mm -hmm. At one point, we were in a car. So it's it's kind of confusing where you're supposed to be turning the gas off at. Yeah. Perhaps it's like your neighbors, like you're trying to you're trying to. Commit oh, hey. like a siege on your neighbors. So Actually, you cut their according gas. to this diagram, they're turning the gas on. Yep. They're twisting yep, they it are. and turning it they on. Are. So maybe, yeah, this is an attack on someone. Maybe, yeah. Maybe so. They're going to use that and then and then obviously light it like a blowtorch or something. Yeah, you turn it on. You let it run for a while. You, you crank, let it rip. crank the stove. Or maybe you smoke a cigarette and, and you just flick, flick it. it and just explosion. And walk Massive away and explosion. you look. Yeah. That'd be cool. That would look cool. You would look cool doing that. Mm -hmm. Then you want to uh, be weary of Just, these new items in the world after the tornado. Things are going to get fused together. Yeah, so it looks like that person could either be taking those objects, the branches and what have you, to, to fashion a weapon, as I earlier suggested. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps she's just cleaning up. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna advise you to not worry too much immediately about cleaning up. You know, let that let that someone do that once things are have settled you know what i mean like yeah. that should not be a priority I you're don't taking know what this... someone's job because someone's going to get paid to do that later exactly and that actually looks to me like that was a bush and uh and a branch and then they got fused together in the tornado you know how like blades of grass will go through telephone poles no i did not know that yeah that's a thing too that's real in tornadoes like a like a fucking single blade of grass or <clears throat> like like a weed you know like a stem of a weed will fucking stick into a telephone pole that's pretty crazy and i think that's what's going to happen you're going to get a lot of cats and dogs that are fused together yeah okay and okay I, thing. I, I like where you're going with that you're going to get a lot of you know a chair and um a pool floaty are gonna get intertwined with each other and become a floating chair. Yeah, and there, a lot of these these um, combinations are going to have practical uses that you yeah. wouldn't have planned on. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. Um, then boarding up your windows. You're going to want this is more to keep the the other people out. You're going to want to board up those windows with wood planks and so nails and what so have we're you. back in a house now. Because yeah. we were underground. We were, well, we were most recently we're out but, in a yard. Well, yeah, we've been running around and like turning people's gas on and off. And then we uh, we were out in the yard making, picking up these hybrids. Now, are we maybe locking the neighbors into their house? <laughs> Could that be it? Yeah. You yep. wait until they pass out from the gas. You lock them in. Yeah. You hot you box board up it. their their doors and their windows, and basically you're you're creating a um like a like a prison. Mm -hmm. uh, a prison inside their own home to keep them in there. And the, that's going to give you time to, this, we're not saying never let them out, you know, but this is going to give you time to, to forage and look for things that'll give you an advantage over them while they're, you know, mm -hmm. they can't stop you. And then um, we also do have a list of things that you'll need because Californians aren't prepared no. for tornadoes and, yep. This is a list of things that you'll need in case a tornado goes down and it throws the world into an apocalypse. Obviously, state. first and foremost, gun ammo. Gun ammo. Batteries for your gun. Uh, flashlights. 
matches. Matches, yeah, because like mm-hmm. we said, you're gonna need to flick flick a match or something to create an explosion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pots and pans. Good for scaring the tornado. You bang some pots and pans together, just mm-hmm. like a, almost like a bear's coming to attack. Yeah, you your wear house. a big coat. You hold it open. You act big. You bang the pots. Bang and pans. the pots and pans, and maybe the tornado will turn around and go fuck up your neighbor's house. Mm-hmm. Plastic utensils. Yeah, yeah. Make sure they're plastic. Um, we don't want any of the biodegradable paper shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like we want some plastic that's gonna that's gonna stay around for long after we're here. Yeah. Uh, you want uh, some rope and some twine. A map of the area. Yeah, and, and possibly a map of your house, like we said. Yeah, map of your house. Blueprint map. Uh, you want permanent markers? Yeah, yeah, some absolutely. sharpies. Uh, change of clothes. Change of clothes is going to be essential because you're probably going to get filthy at some point here, and mm-hmm. you, know, you know, like if it's bad enough you're having to do all this to begin with, like you but might you as want well at least one be change of clothes. Yeah, yeah, you want to stay fresh. Mm-hmm. You could take the the set that you're not wearing. You climb down the hole. You wash it in the. You'll probably have to make a new hole, so that way you're not washing it in the drinking yeah, water. Yeah, a natural disaster is no excuse to not be fly. Mm-hmm. You got to stay fly. Yeah, you wash it up, you let it dry, you stay fly. And then uh, you want a can opener, you want lighters, a uh, camp stove and propane, a uh, hatchet. Or an axe. Or an um, axe. Probably a, a axe, right? Like an axe can be more effective than a, a hatchet. Uh, Maybe not more practical. I guess like a hatchet, it's easier to mm-hmm. to swing at somebody. I say both. Yeah, I yeah, say definitely, both. ideally both yeah. for sure. And I mean, for firewood, you're gonna want to split the big logs with the axe. You're gonna want to make the kindling with a hatchet. So you get yeah. them both. Uh, first aid book. You don't need a first aid kit. You just no. need a book that tells you how to do first aid without any supplies. <laughs> yeah. So you just get get yourself a book. It'll teach you how to you know like treat an open wound with just your mouth. Yeah, and then you rub aloe vera on it, nope. and then no, you don't. You don't. We don't have any aloe vera. No. no. Well, I mean, natural aloe vera that you oh, find yeah, out. Yeah, the world. yeah. You get it from an aloe vera plant. Sure. Yeah. Uh, then you're gonna want sunglasses because yeah. you want to look cool. Yeah. Again, you know the. Uh, <laughs> Massive disaster is no reason for you to not look cool. So, so sunglasses for sure. Duct tape, man. This is gonna this is gonna go back to to keeping your neighbors in check. There's gonna be a, a good chance you're gonna have to duct tape somebody potentially as like a hostage situation. So mm-hmm. be sure you've got duct tape. I can't really think of any other use that you would need the duct tape for. But and duct, duct tape is very threatening. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And I mean, you know, there's always a reason that pops up for you to use duct tape. So mm-hmm. you want to do glow sticks because in the apocalypse, a lot of people are doing drugs. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be like one big rave. <laughs> In places, you know what In I mean? places, yeah. Not everywhere, but some places you're going to find cool people that are just going out with a bang. Yeah, like all the places that have a surplus of, of ecstasy or like psychedelics, they're probably going to be mm-hmm. raving it up. So, and if you, you know, got glow sticks, then you're you everybody's Possibly friend. trade them for, for some drugs, which yeah. would be great. Uh, boots. You want to look cool. You want to have boots. You don't want to be wearing fucking... No, you can't wear sneakers in, you know, the... In the apocalypse. The, is this the apocalypse or is this like a what it, tornado? Tornado, yeah. Well, same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's, it's, it's a California tornado. Which is going to end, end the world for at least <laughs> yeah. California. A.K.A. apocalypse. Um, Do you think they have these, these types of uh, tornadoes and hurricanes and that sort of thing up in Canada? I don't know. Free candy? Do, do you guys have tornadoes and, and hurricanes in Canada? Obviously, you guys get some some sort of extreme weather, be it snowstorms or, or what have you. So mm-hmm. I'm just wondering, do they get like earthquakes or a tornado? Sound off, free candy. Let us know. Um, another thing, earplugs, because there's going to be a lot of people around you that are just fucking irritating and getting on your nerves. And they want to tell their life story because it's the apocalypse and they're trying to be a character. And oh, they're stuff. they're saying prayers. It's like, who really yeah. wants to hear that? So pop in those earplugs and, you know, put them on mute. Uh-huh. You want to bring a smartphone for some reason? Yeah. I yeah. guess you could take pictures. Yeah, while you, while you have smartphone battery. Take uh, notes. Yeah, while you have mo- battery. You could play like a farm game. Uh-huh. Um, extra pants. And you also want to bring other items. Yeah. Other comfort this items. This is like a... Um, like a neck pillow. Like a wild card type deal. You, you each get to pick one essential item that you bring with you that's not on the list. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, it might be like a RC car. Uh, just make sure you have the batteries in that sucker. Or or maybe it's a... It's like a bike. 
Um, and I mean, that's really it. You just seek shelter. You wait for it to pass all the way. Remember, there's two storms. You got the eye of the storm, so there's going to be two storms. Yeah. So it really, the most the most threatening part long term when a tornado strikes is going to be the the carnage with other people and the looting and the the rioting and the shooting each other. Yeah. And, um, you know, just stay safe, be prepared. And hopefully, I mean, I know that I learned a lot today. Oh, yeah, man, absolutely. I feel and like I feel I'm ready to go. If, if this tornado wants to come, mm-hmm. like, bring it on, bitch. Yeah. Bring it on. We're come, ready. We'll come on, tornado. And we hope you're ready, too. And, uh, and that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. I, I don't have anything it. else. All right, well, we love you. We'll see you next week. Natural Habitat Recordings.